The Miami Dolphins play a football game tomorrow. Yeah, I know it's preseason, but it is football against the Atlanta Falcons. And on today's show, we're going to be breaking down the latest news, notes, rumors around the Miami Dolphins just 24 hours away from this first preseason game getting kicked off against the Atlanta Falcons in Miami. And make sure you join us here on the channel because we are going to be live for a Dolphins-Falcons watch party. I am so excited to be back breaking down the action live with all the Dolphins fans. Join myself and producer Matt Goldman as we will have everything happening happening in the first preseason game and we'll break down the game after who won who lost and everything coming out of the first preseason game what is a little disappointing though is that the fact that the starters might not end up playing Mike McDaniel Dolphins head coach on Wednesday's availability to the media kind of hinted at the fact that Tua and the rest of the crew might not actually be playing in this first preseason game specifically he said this that he didn't want to get ahead of himself when the terms of deciding whether the starters were going to play or not and who will, who won't. But he also added that I don't think you're going to be surprised by the active roster based on how previous years have gone, which basically points to the starters and specifically to a tug of Aloha, not seeing the gridiron on Friday night. And to me, this does make sense, though. And as a fan, as someone who covers this team, like, yes, I want to see the real starters that you're going to see in September, October, and November on the football field in August. But when you think of all of the injuries that have hindered this team early on, it makes sense not to probably push the envelope here and allow some of the main starters who actually are healthy to have a night off. When you think of all the people that have already went through injuries, Jalen Waddell, Aaron Brewer, Jordan Poyer, Cam Smith, Anthony Walker Jr., two wide receivers, and as you come on Braxton Berrios, and then you got three key players in Jalen Phillips, Bradley Chubb, and Odell Beckham Jr. still on the pup list, and that's not even mentioning Isaiah Wynn, who is the projected starting left guard as well. Like You already have so many players that have projected starting roles on this team that are not participating in practices due to injuries or have not participated at all because they're on the pup list. There is no need to go out there in your first preseason game and play your top guys. Hell, I'm even scared to play some of the backups because they might be forced to start if some of these injuries continue to linger to the starters, and then they would be potentially out if they get hurt. But they do have to play to at least prove they can inherit a roster spot. But I am fine playing it safe. The Dolphins, to me, I think should probably do one semi-dress rehearsal this preseason, whether it be for a quarter or for an entire half, whether it be in the second or third preseason game. Doesn't matter to me, but to me, in one of those two weeks coming up, they should probably play at least a quarter or a half of the starters. Uh, let's get into other notes and news from the Dolphins training camp here prior to this game tomorrow night. QB2 battle is reportedly close from Mike McDaniel. McDaniel talked about the QB2 battle between Skylar Thompson and Mike White. And obviously, there's only three quarterbacks on this roster right now. You have Tua, Skylar Thompson, and Mike White. They cut Gavin Hardison a week and a half ago, the UDFA from UTEP. And when asked about the QB2 battle, McDaniel said it's neck and neck and from afar for me to even think about who's going to win that job. And this is one of the most interesting position battles on this roster is because it's likely that Miami's only going to keep two QBs. With the new rule that you could have unlimited practice squad elevations, unlike years prior, it makes it much more likely that you're going to keep two quarterbacks and then just have a third guy on the practice squad because he can be your emergency quarterback every single week and you don't have to use a 53-man roster spot for a third QB. And as I go into this preseason game against Atlanta, I have pretty clear expectations on how the quarterback situation is going to unfold. Now, maybe it's Skylar Thompson starting, maybe it's Mike Watts starting, but either way, to me, Mike White will get an entire half of football to play. Skylar Thompson will get an entire half of football to play. Now, it's going to be intriguing to see who starts because that might give us an early indication on who is that QB2 guy right now in Mike McDaniel's head. But I do expect each of these quarterbacks to get two full quarters of football tomorrow night. And as we currently look at who is going to be the quarterback to for this Dolphins team, I think it could go either way. Like, Mike White's a little bit more expensive just by about $1.5 million on the cap, but with the Dolphins' cap space being so good right now, you don't really have to be concerned about what quarterback is making what, especially when it's such a minor difference between the two guys. Skyler obviously has had experience 
for the past couple years in this Dolphins system. Mike White coming over last year. White is the technical better quarterback if you think about it and saw what he did last season. But I just feel like Skylar Thompson's got that dog in him and someone who played in a playoff game in 2022 on the road and almost won that game. I'll be intrigued to see which quarterback can come out and win this quarterback to battle. I'm going to give my prediction here in just a second. But before I do that, I want to hear your prediction first. Who wins the quarterback to battle in Miami? Type MW for Mike White. Type ST for Skylar Thompson. Chime in down in the comment section. If I had to give my lean, at least of right now, after two weeks of training camp before the first preseason game, I lean Skylar Thompson. And this is not me projecting it. This is who I would have it right now if the 53-man roster cutdown date was today at 4 p.m. Eastern time. Like, that's just where I think it could possibly go. I like Skylar Thompson's arm. I like what he has done in the system in the past. And I think he is a fine backup for Tua Tagovailoa. But we'll see what ultimately ends up happening over the next three weeks. Next up, we already know who the starting guards are going to be for the Dolphins in week one against the Jacksonville Jaguars. We actually might, and we've talked about it in the past here this week, but we'll start with this. When asked about the offensive line, Mike McDaniel said this, I am seeing a new Rob Jones. That is what coach Mike McDaniel said on Rob Jones, who is looking to replace Robert Hunt for that starting right guard role. But he is initially listed as a starting left guard on this Dolphins offensive line depth chart that the Dolphins released earlier this week. He's not the only offensive lineman getting praise from the head coach. Liam Eichenberg is also getting some nice things said about him from Mike McDaniel. Coach said Liam has developed so much in the past couple of seasons with us, and he's done so as a master of multi which means he could just play every position. He's back up center. He's also might be the starting right guard for the Miami Dolphins. And I do like the confidence that head coach Mike McDaniel is showing in the two guys who are currently listed as your two starting guards. But I just don't know if that really is the, the truth of the matter. Like he's hyping up his guys. Yeah, that's a good thing. Head coaches are supposed to do that. That's what the coaching staff is there to do. Coach you hard, but also hype you up. I'm not so sold on the idea that he is that happy about having Liam Eikenberg and Rob Jones potentially be your starting right guard and left guard combination. We're going to talk more about it in just a second, but we are sponsored by Game Time, the best way to get your tickets. No matter where you are or what event you're trying to go to, Game Time will have you covered. Whether you want to go to the Dolphins-Falcons preseason game or the Dolphins-Commanders preseason game or a concert, comedy show, does not matter. Game Time will have you covered with the best ticket prices. They have all-in pricing, which means you get to see your exact ticket price when you're looking at them. You're not going to get blindsided by fees when you're checking out. They also have a panoramic view where you can actually see your exact vantage point from where you would be sitting if you bought that ticket. They also have the lowest price guarantee. Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference if you find a cheaper ticket on a different service in the same exact section, same exact row, same exact seat. Game Time is really the best to ever do it. And you can get $20 off your first purchase when you download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code CHATSPORTS. Terms apply, but again, make sure you create an account, redeem code CHATSPORTS, C H A T. S-P-O-R-T-S to get $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Remember, this was the offensive line depth chart that was released by the Dolphins earlier this week before the preseason game. You see your starting tackles and center. That's completely normal. But with Isaiah Wynn out of the question currently on the pup list, they have Rob Jones, who we have projected all offseason long as your starting right guard, as your starting left guard. And Liam Eikenberg, who has been in that competition for a right guard, who is also your primary backup center as well, is your starting right guard, Jack Driscoll and Lester Cotton, who have been fighting for that position as well, behind them. And even though that Mike McDaniel has showcased confidence and said that both of them have grown, at least from last season to this season, I still think you need to add someone into this interior offensive lineman room, especially after Aaron Brewer left Wednesday's practice with an injury. We don't know the full extent of that injury right now, but hopefully it's nothing serious. Like, I just don't think you have a lot of depth here, and it's clearly the worst 
group on your entire team. Like, if you go through every single position, I don't think you could seriously tell me with a straight face that the interior offensive line depth and department is not the worst on this team. It's unfortunate that it is because you want to have a stable offensive line to protect quarterback Tua Tagovailoa, but it's really clear to me that someone should be added to this Dolphins depth chart on the offensive line, whether it be through free agency and Mark Lewinsky, or whether it be a trade or someone that gets cut um, from other teams and during roster cut down day and Miami brings them in. I think they need to add someone to this room though, for sure. All right, finally, final note that we'll talk about today. Ethan Bonner, the cornerback who has just had an exceptional training camp, was on the outside looking in of the roster bubble. Could he actually be starting when we really get to week one of the NFL season for this Dolphins defense? Well, I'll start it with this. And shout out to Connor, who asked Omar Kelly, who was doing a Q&A on Twitter this morning. He asked Bonner, is he challenging for that fourth cornerback spot behind Cater Coat, who um, – Jalen Ramsey and Kendall Fuller. Omar actually responded with this, saying Bonner is a starter right now. And that raised some eyebrows from Dolphins fans on Twitter, but also myself because Ethan Bonner being a starter, I'm not saying it would be a bad thing. He's been really good in camp, battling out with Drake London and joint practices, but also holding his own against Jalen Waddell and Tyree Kill. I just don't understand how he could be a starter on this Dolphins defense and secondary. I respect Omar Kelly, but I'm just going to have to disagree with him on the idea that Ethan Bonner is a starting corner on this team. And then it's not me discrediting Ethan or what he's done in this two weeks of training camp because he's been downright terrific. But when you think of what Miami has in their cornerback room, there just really isn't a lot of room for him to be classified as a starter. Ethan Bonner is an outside corner. He is not a nickel. And Cater Coke has actually had a pretty solid camp as well. So to me, that is not out of the question. So if you're projecting Ethan Bonner to be a starter on this football team, that means you are projecting him to be starting on the boundary over one of Jalen Ramsey and Kendall Fuller. And that is simply not going to happen. I understand Ethan has had an exceptional camp. I'm not discrediting that. I'm not trying to say that what Omar Kelly has seen at Dolphins practices because he's actually there. I'm not. I'm not trying to say he's seeing diff different things and he's not right here. But how is he going to be starting over Kendall Fuller? Not starting over Jalen Ramsey. Kendall Fuller has a pretty decent camp as well. Like, I like the idea of Ethan Bonner playing so well where we could have these conversations on if he should start for this Dolphins defense week one against Jacksonville. Like, that just means you have even more depth in a really good secondary. But starting over Kendall Fuller or Jalen Ramsey, that's just not going to happen, folks. So I don't really disagree or agree with the idea that he can be a starter. But being the first boundary corner to be backup of Kendall Fuller and Jalen Ramsey, that I could see and get behind. But predict it for me. Am I wrong? Is Omar Kelly wrong? Really, basically, you're choosing between me and him and our two thought processes here, at least on this Thursday afternoon. Will Ethan Bonner be a starter on this Dolphins defense come week one? Type Y for yes or type N for no. Before we get out of here, just one more reminder. We are going to be live for Dolphins-Falcons preseason game number one. Cannot wait. Dolphins football in Miami hosting the Falcons. You see this thumbnail? Click on it. Join myself and producer Matt Goldman. We are going to have a lot of fun. We're going to drink. We're going to break down the game, commentary analysis. We got it all here at Dolphins today. So make sure you subscribe and join us tomorrow for our watch party. See you then.